In this video, we're looking at three different ways to create a base plate in SOLIDWORKS 2022. We're using the sheet metal technique as our final technique, which is the correct way to produce a base plate. Welcome, my name is Martin Skelton. Let's get into it. Okay, so I've opened a new SOLIDWORKS um, drawing just straight off open SOLIDWORKS 2022 this is the first page I am using uh, millimeters in the measurements okay so let's get into it so in SOLIDWORKS 2022 we're just going new part open so the first method of drawing a base plate is the dumb solid parts so we're using our top plane, right click sketch. So up here we have our sketch buttons. I'm using the rectangle, center rectangle, and this is our outlay of our base plate. So draw a rectangle and we will say it's 250 millimeters by 250 millimeters. So that's pretty much the outlay of our base plate. Obviously, if the base plate needs to be bigger or smaller, it can. So we will take the corners off. So we have a radius tool here, a sketch fillet. And underneath, we also have a chamfer. So if we use our sketch fillet, we can add our uh, measurement here. The standard is 10 mil measurement. So we will keep with the 10 mil measurement and we'll just radius the corners, the sharp corners off the plate. Click one line click the second line you'll see the preview for the, the fillet do all four corners click sketch fillet click OK my one is pinned so click it again and we have our base plate it's our sketch for our base plate and the sketch is the most important um, aspect of the base plate so one way of doing this is to go with another sketch fillet, drag it from the center out to mark our four holes. On this one, we're doing four direct holes. But another way is to use our center line and we will just mark the position of four holes. So if we keep our um, line horizontal, you'll see it on the little yellow marker that comes up. That tells us we're horizontal, then our vertical, back to our horizontal and then back up to our vertical. Now for this method we can put in our um, measurements so say we say we're in 25 millimeters we're going to set our holes that sets our four holes our points for our four holes exactly 25 millimeters from our edge. But say if you wanted to have two of them at 25 and two of them at 30. But you also want to have the different constraints. So if we wanted to offset our constraints, we can always just add a separate line across. What we're trying to do is pinpoint positions of our holes. So under our um, relations, you can see we now have another two points on the hold. From this, we can add, uh, we'll do it that way, our circles for our holes. And we can take these off later on, but we were saying that we want these two at 30. is here now in this tutorial I'm not using any um, shortcuts but I will use short shift so shift click all four holes and then we just say equals that puts all four holes at the equal size then smart dimension and we are saying these holes are 18 mil holes per 16 mil bolt so as you can see 
Top two, Irene 25, bottom two, Irene 30. This gives us our outline and our drawing of the actual plate itself. First one we'll make is a dumb feature. So you go boss extrude, we're saying 10 millimeters, and there is our plate. Now, this is a dumb plate, as in it can have no other reference information. We want to make it sheet metal rather than anything else that would be on it. If you're just doing the normal SolidWorks sketch extrude, that's what you'd do. But if we want to turn this into sheet metal, we can convert to sheet metal. We have our face, which is here. We want 10 mil, and we don't need any of the rest of this for the moment. We click OK. It says convert to sheet metal, and it's a sheet metal solid. So in a more advanced tutorial, we can now add things like custom properties and references to this plate. So that's one method of how to make um, a plate in SOLIDWORKS. Another method is to get rid of these two. So select them, right click, delete, and I'll delete the flat patterns and everything else. Our boss extrude is there. So if we go back in to our boss extrude, we have our points for our holes, but we want to take out these circles and break them into construction geometry. So there's an option here for construction, click that option and then exit the sketch. Now we have our straight plate with no hole extrude. So under our boss extrude one, we have sketch, we show the sketch. Now we have the positions of our holes once again. If we go to features, there's a feature called the hole wizard. If we click the hole wizard, we have options for different types of holes and uh, slots, countersinks, etc. We just want the one for a straight hole. And if we go down to a drill size, and we will say we want to drill size um, 16, uh, sorry now, 18 millimeters. True all, do we get our positions? So when you go to the positions tab, click the face of the plate and make sure our dots line up with where we want our holes positioned. Click OK, and then on this sketch, right click, hide. So that is another way of putting the holes into the, um, the sketch. It can be changed here or edited here. And then we're back up to sheet metal, convert to sheet metal, click, and if you want a three mil plate, we'll set our thickness to three, 10, etc. Now we're back into a converted solid for 10 mil plate. This is not the really the correct way of presenting this to someone. So if we go back out and we get rid of our holes and all other features, we also take our boss extrude and we delete our boss extrude and we are left with our sketch. Sketch is most important as it dictates everything else. So if we just say base flange tab, click on a line for that sketch, and it will allow us to add parameters and metal fabrication parameters to our final model. So we are saying it's a 10 mil plate and the K factor is added K factor would be for if we're bending and being in the another tutorial. We're not using sh um, material sheet metal parameters or a gauge table. So we just click OK. Now, as you can see, 
we have got rid of our extrude and we just have sheet metal and a base flange. So the flange is handy because you can do other operations to that flange that can be conducted in sheet metal, like um, edge flange, miter flange on top of this plate if required. Well, if we go back to features, go to our hole wizard. Once again, we're on our hole, we're on our ISO, we're on our 18 mil and we're through all. Back to our positions. Click the front of the face, drop one hole, drop two, they have to be in the centers, drop three, drop four, click. Now we have a non dumb solid that can be worked off of and extra parameters added. If we need to make changes to our hole positions, and we will say that the top hole also wants to, the bottom hole wants to come up 50 millimeters. We can double click our measurement, click our line changes. When we close the sketch, our hole follows. If we want to change our hole itself, we can right click, edit feature, change the hole size. If we want to add countersinks or um, cheese head, sinks we can add everything that way as well so if i just go back and i change our 50 mil back down to 25 mil you see it's now 25 mil which gives all our plate four direct holes if you want to add a material just add plain carbon it's adding materials is a great way to um, see different parts of assemblies and structures and even use different colors. So back up again. Now for saving a DFX, I always click on the plate. There's a normal tool here to give you the front visualization of the plate. Click export to DFX. Save it as part three save our options again are face or sheet metal i always select face because sometimes sheet metal you might have a jog or a small bend so once it's saved to face the next thing is to save our file and then every sheet metal component i if I'm sending it to be plasma cut, etc., I will always um, send a PDF drawing with that part so that the operator of the plasma can also see what um, the part is when he's cutting, can lay out the material, and can do his final checks for um, tolerance. So if we add here properties down to three millimeters, our one is to three. And then we just put in some rough measurements so that they know when they're measuring the plate, they can get the correct sizes. And we add 10 millimeter here. Now, as far as the drawings, you would add in all your information. You might have a bill of materials, quantities, etc. File, save as. We always save the part with the uh, join. No file, save as once again. And we're saving a DFX format. That kind of concludes the tutorial and where and how you would build a base plate. Very simple tutorial. Till the next time.